Welcome, what is up? Thank you for tuning back into the Chaos Lair. Of course, I'm Chris Chaos here with your SmackDown 411. Uh, I just, my biggest gripe, it's not about the show, it's about the fans. You pay your hard-earned money, you go into these shows, and all of a sudden, like, nobody cares. Like, whatever. Like, the fans on Raw last night were hot for most of the show. And I didn't get that tonight. It's just kind of sad to see. Anyway, uh, show starts off with the video package for uh, Dino and The Miz. You know, personally, I love the package, but I didn't think SmackDown needed to start off that way. But it led right into the Ambrose Asylum, so I guess it made a whole lot of sense. Uh, you know, Miz comes out as his guest, and it, you know, it just kind of is what it is. The Miz is, I thought, gonna go even higher and higher with his intensity, but he just didn't do it this week. I, you know, Dean hands him that appreciation. He kind of throws it to him and then attacks him. I thought Miz should have knocked the hell out of him with that, with that frame, and then attacked him. I thought it would have been a better, uh, better way to start the brawl. But you know what? The plan was for Dino to get the upper hand and to leave, so it's just not the way I would have booked it. But then again, what the hell do I know? Uh, Natty attacks Nikki right before their scheduled match. Uh, we come come back. We go to commercial. Come back. There, you know, Natty's coming to the ring. Here comes Nikki after a a long uh, delayed entrance. She comes out. Straight to the ring, spears Natty, big brawl, big pull apart, uh, and Natty ends up getting the upper hand sharpshooter on the floor after she goes after the knee. I mean, it's just kind of perfect. Uh, I I saw a couple of people say on Twitter about there were a couple of botches. It's a brawl. There are no botches in brawls. And just as soon as I say that, somebody's going to get really hurt because of a misstep or something. But anyway, usually any kind of little slips or anything, you got people pulling you one way and you're trying to go the other way. You can't really consider that a botch. Uh, Kalisto versus Dolph Ziggler. Kalisto gets the, the nod here. Kalisto, by the way, I'm impressed, took some great chair shots. I mean, he he sold it so great. I'm impressed. I really am. Uh, then you have Apollo Crews comes out and try to make the save, and he he eats chair shots. By the way, if you go back and I noted I uh, said this on Twitter, if you notice, they showed the first two chair chair shots to Kalisto, and then they cut to the crowd, and there was a couple of kids that they cut to, like four or five year olds, maybe six years old, you know, like upset and. Uh, it's it's funny, but there was also a part of me thinking, maybe this is why we shouldn't be having chair shots in pro wrestling, WWE anyway, these days. But I guess the same could have been said about the Attitude Era. There were probably kids the same age then, and they were corrupted, <laughs> as we all were, by the Attitude Era. But anyway... Uh, American Alpha retained against the Wyatts. I still hate the way that they're booking this. I I would have rather we're seeing more and more of the the, the destruction of the Wyatts. As I've said many times, Randy is going to implode the Wyatt family, uh, which is going to set up a match. Hopefully, hopefully, and set up a match with Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania, which is going to be fucking awesome, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, who knows where we go from here? Uh, hopefully something really good will happen next week uh, to kind of keep us engaged in the angle. Uh, I'm gonna skip to I'm gonna skip down just a little bit. Uh, Carmella beats uh, CJ Lunde or Lund or whatever. Her real her real wrestling name is Thunder Kitty. Uh, for those of you that know, and I retweeted some things on on Twitter. You can go back and look at that. That I saw her wrestle. And I believe it was a six-woman tag match at the last ROH TV tapings that was in Nashville. Um, it was all—it's almost been a year. 
uh, and she's from uh, the New Orleans Lafayette area, so it's not too big of a thing. What surprised me though was that the crowd didn't know her. Like I would think of someone that's that sh- that's I mean it, the people should know who she was, but then maybe they were just playing along. Or she she didn't exactly look like she normally looks. Like she had way more makeup on this time, and her hair was fixed different than the last time I saw her, which was a couple of months ago. Uh, so I mean, who knows? And the crowd chants "Let's go, Jobber," which is just hilarious. Uh, if you follow Ultra Liger on Twitter, he said "F you, crowd." So I just touche, Ultra Liger, touche. Uh, the uh, main event was Cena Corbin with a. Uh, Uncle Allen, AJ Styles on the, on commentary. Somebody feeding AJ. I just don't like it. AJ says, "No, this is not a a career defining match." And then, you know, I'm not even a minute later comes back and says, "Well, yeah, this is going to be a career defining match when I retain the WWE title because somebody fed him that line." I don't like it. I don't like it because we all know that that's not going to be a career defining moment. That moment, the first time probably, but looking at it from here, and we still have two and a half weeks uh, left until the Rumble, we don't think it's going to be career-defining, but they could go out there and blow us all away, which I hope they really do. Uh, And Cena gets the win, of course. What else would you expect? Last thing I want to talk about, Becky Lynch... Showing Daniel Bryan the footage from last week where she taps La Luchadora, who turns out to be Alexa Bliss. Alexa comes in, tells Daniel, don't buy her crap. She just wants another title match. Yes, she does. And she gets it next week in Memphis in a steel cage. I'm sold. I'm sold. I'm glad I, I, I didn't buy the, uh, the tickets to SmackDown until just a, a couple of weeks ago and I, it, it ate at me and I didn't get the good the good seats like I normally do because I waited so long and it kind of ate at me something in my gut told me that I need to be there for this because WWE always and I do mean always does something really special when they go to Memphis if you don't believe me when they do TV in Memphis go back and look Every time they have done something in Memphis for like the last 15 years, it's been something special. Something special has always happened. And they're continuing that trend. Next week, El Chaos will be in the building with my homeboy, Jay Ray. Now, that's all I got. Uh, Come back later and I will show you guys or give you thoughts on uh, the mid-season finale of Lucha Underground. I haven't really done anything on Lucha Underground, but I don't think I've done anything on YouTube on Lucha, but uh, that's a fail on my part. Anyway, deuces. Cass out.